So today we are gonna check out five knives, some of which are new and I have never featured on the channel before, and some of which you might not have ever seen. Starting it off, we have the new Jack Wolf Knives Gunslinger Jack, which we do have available on the Neve Knife Co. site. So if you are wanting to pick these up, they literally just dropped the time. I'm gonna probably post this video right when they drop. So if you wanna get some, I do appreciate it if you buy it from the site. Admittedly, 100% being authentic, yes, I think it is overpriced. Uh, uh, just being straight up, I do think that the price is a bit high on it. I do love the knife, and, you know, I, I, I probably, I hate to say it like this because, you know, it's hard to say something's overpriced and say that you would pay it because I, I do feel like I, I like the knife a lot, man, and I feel like, you know, yeah, I'd probably pay it, but I probably wouldn't be happy about the price. Uh, there's so many great qualities to it that I personally desire in a knife. So that's another reason. So like, I do think that that does add something, right? If, if something appeals to you, and let me go over some of the things that do appeal to me, they might not appeal to you. One is this mecha, mecha thin geometry. Do you want to talk about being able to sharpen in the field? Um, I'm thinking about doing a video of actually doing a sharpening in the field and showing the reality of sharpening in the field. Because so many people and companies talk about like you know blade seals and hrc and how like it's set up to to sharpen in the field geometry is the only thing that matters when sharpening in the field that's it i can sharpen this knife probably three to five times faster than most 8cr 13 mov steels in the field especially if it has you know medium to thicker geometry this is s90v with insanely thin geometry so not only will this just sharpen up incredibly fast but it also will cut and have the performance of a a great slicer and so everything is going to kind of come out with the geometry on something like this not only the edge retention the cutting performance the ease of sharpening the ease of maintenance you know stropping and honing and mixed with these ergonomics, my goodness. Now there are like five different versions of this. Every single one of them, in my opinion, are gorgeous. This is a hard one to choose. Like if you're gonna try to choose which one, I'm sure most people have one that's gonna kind of appeal to them a little bit more. But when I'm looking at them, all of them look damn good. But this one with the wood, I keep, I'm growing more and more and more to appreciate. We got the blasted titanium with the ironwood, which ironwood is a very dense, very hard wood. Now, your, if you do get this version, your colors will vary. My color is a little bit on the darker side, but remember, I do not enhance any of the colors on my camera. So you're getting it exactly how the camera's picking it up. My eyes pick it up a little tiny bit lighter, uh, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. I actually like the rich tone to it. The action on these is exactly what you'd want, um, you know, in a modern knife. The front flipper, <clears throat> you can flick in any direction, any way, shape, and form easily. It sticks up. It has the right jimping. It literally grips you back. And then you have the fuller, which is equally as good right or left-handed. There is a full titanium one. I do not know how that one would be left-handed because, you know, you might be putting pressure on the lock bar. But it, it um, I don't know, you know, but these ones, if you're left hand, just get the one with the, you know, with an inlay and you'll be good. The titanium mill pocket clip is satin, just like the blade and the backspacer. Like I said, very ergonomic. The blade shape, you know, in a lot of cases, I'm not a huge fan of these clip point blades, but this is awesome because the tip lands center with the pivot, if not a little lower, so it's easy to get to. It has this little tiny bit of belly for cutting down on a surface or skinning or anything like that, but then it has a nice long flat area for long cuts. So this blade shape just happens to work really, really well for everyday carry purposes. Like I said, these are available on the site if you do want to pick one up. Uh, the only real negatives I have is the main one is I do think the price is up there. Um, other than that, I wish there was better lock bar access and I wish there was a little bit more room under the clip. Not for regular jeans. Anybody wearing regular pants, it's going to be fine. But if you wear thick pocketed jeans, you know, it, it's going to be a little tight once you get up to here. But all in all, man, these things are so, so solid. They're, they're beautifully done. Um, not only do they look good, these guys definitely got me into the modern traditionals. And I never, I always was a, 
like they always were appealing to me, but I was never really into them to like carry them and use them. But I've been carrying and using this one and the other ones, you know, a lot. And, you know, they've really uh, got me into the modern traditionals. Let's check out the next one. Now, the next one is a little hawkbill blade, the Ela Forge Talon. The Ela Forge Talon. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Now, this is an M390 hawkbill blade with a compression lock that has a button attached. So, and it is a compression lock, just like you'd expect from Spyderco. It's very similar to like the Spyderco smock because, you know, they have the button on that one. You can actually see it. I'm not sure if it'll come over the camera. Well, anyways, it, you can see the liner moving right there. It's on this side. And that wedges in between the stop pin and the tang of the blade, making for what should be a strong lock. We we it's well known from Spider Co. and they are known for doing you know a nice solid lock with the compression lock. So I'm sure that this one's going to be plenty tough. Um, it does have a secondary lock on it right here. That um, you know it's right where your thumb lands, so I don't think it's a big deal. Because if you're going to use it as like a self-defense knife, it's not going to be a big deal if you accidentally hit it. But in use, you might accidentally lock it and then you'll you'll try to disengage it and it won't. You'll have to, you know, maneuver it and pull it down and then, you know, reclose it. Not a big deal, but just an observation. I'm not sure why they put the secondary lock on there. I'm guessing because it's somewhat pushed towards a self-defense knife. So, and I do think that this is a self-defense knife meant for the forward grip. Why do I say that when it has a karambit ring? Well, because this ring is too small for a finger. So I think that it's more meant for the forward grip, which with this clip, you can have it in the pocket, pull it out with your pinky and then flip it forward into the forward grip. You can easily do that. I believe these are tritium spots right there uh, that's a really small tritium if so but it does have what looks like a reversible clip if you do want to reverse it being you know a button compression lock that's a good thing i do notice i have to really intentionally push that button all the way all the way in for it to close like if i just push it it does not it kind of rattles a little bit so you have to really push that sucker in which is fine i'm just you know making you know an observation the um, thumb stud works well. It's placed in a good position. It's very easy to reverse and thumb flick. However, the detent is a little bit on the softer side. Personally, for me, you know, it's a great slow roller. It, does, it is very fidgety, very, very fidgety, but I find it just to be a little, I don't know. It's right there on the verge. Yeah, it's a, just a little bit on the softer side, not by much. Um, this Hawkbill blade is definitely going to snag and pull things into it, but it'll also be good for regular EDC use. Um, this is just a quick look at it, a quick first impression. So, you know, blasted finish. We have a blasted and satin blade. Like I said, a compression lock. We do have the clip. But yeah, just a quick look at it for the first time. The price on those was like $245 is what I'm finding on DHgate. Now, I wanna show you guys something I accidentally did. We are going to quickly go through these because it's not about these knives. I was testing these knives the other day um, and I was throwing them into a stump. If you watch my Instagram, I made a little video of it and I was throwing them into the stump and then this one must have ricocheted out, which I'm sure happened a couple times and hit one of the other knives. So it must have like hit, deflect and then, you know, hit one of the other knives because look at this chunk I blew out of the edge. This, that's a big chunk, man. And it's not nothing to do with the heat treatment. It absolutely hit one of the other knives. So, and hit it hard with a lot of impact. Um, you'd think being as thick as it is, that wouldn't happen. I don't know. You know, like I said, it, it hit hard. So, and then we have, we have, um, three V steel, which is probably what it hit. I don't know. Magna cut and S 35 VM. I freaking, I'll be honest between the three, these two are my favorites. Um, this is a little bit more EDC friendly. All the sheets, all the sheets are incredible. These are, I should have said this. These are USA made faux Bose knives. We have the Kakula, the Alaris, 
and the tier one. So just so you know the names of them. I am freaking loving these knives. They're 100% USA made, done to a very high standard. The geometry I find to be perfect for what I would want in either a tactical knife or, you know, an outdoors, you know, utility knife, combat knife, or even just, you know, for like this one, man, I could do, do, use this one for food prep, for breaking down wood. This one's a little bit more tactical-ish, but I freaking love both of these, man. They just... They're super solid, very well built. All the fit and finishing work is done to perfection. You know, I find that the, even the edge geometry is done very well. Um, these have held an edge like incredibly well. I do have a little tiny bit of rust happening right there. Uh, I probably cut something citrusy and didn't clean it. I need to clean them off. But anyways, I just figured I'd give you a quick look at it and show you what we did right here by mistake. I will be fixing that maybe in a video, maybe not. I'm not sure, but check out Phobos Knives, man. Incredible, incredible USA made fixed blades. If you want to see a bit more on these knives, I will put a little card up in the corner with a video that I did on them where I go through them a little bit more in depth, but I do plan on putting these into a full length use and test video eventually coming up soon you know not the weather's getting a little bit nicer so I did make a mistake and I had to replace the end of this video with a couple different knives because I can't show the knives that I originally had for the video but instead we'll check out two different knives so we have here the Defcon jungle knife Kabuto and my goodness does this thing flip good uh, very good flipping action I love 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 this blade shape s35 VN it's got not a regular blasted finish. I'm not sure if this is like a coating and then blasted, but it almost feels like an aluminum oxide blasted titanium type of finish where it's rough. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a coating and then a blasted, but the titanium has an anodized and stone washed finish, which is really nice. I love the micro milling. The clip works well. Um, access to the lock bar is decent. Like they could have cut it back a little more, but it's comfortable and it is very smooth on the drop. This flipper tab, while it is a large flipper tab, I always say this, I don't mind a large flipper tab. I just want the flipper to work well. And this works great. It's a comfortable flipper. You have a nice strong detent, a lot of leverage into that flipper. It's nice and high relative to the center of the pivot. It cranks out there. Nice and ergonomic. I do feel the clip a little bit right there, but it's still you know pretty well done. This would be a fantastic EDC knife for some Somebody who enjoys flipper only knives or just flipper knives in general. I know right now, you know, we're kind of into the multi deployment type of action, but this is under 200 bucks. So you're getting quite a bit for your money. It does have a little glass breaker or attitude adjuster back there. The geometry is well done. You know, it's going to slice really good. It has a crowned spine. So it has a lot of little details there. Yeah, the plunge grind's a little close to the edge, so that would be a negative in my opinion. But, you know, there is a lot of really cool little um, details on this that, that in my opinion, uh, make for a pretty high quality knife if you're looking for a premium folding knife without spending an insane amount of money. And DEFCON, you know, because of the name, I would have never expected to like them as much as I do. But my goodness, man, they put out some really good stuff that has very much impressed me. So I would have never thought by the name. The name just looks, seems like, a, I don't know, like, a, like a, a mall ninja type of name, you know. Next. Next is the Tuya Voodoo, and yeah, I like this one. Great reverse flicking knife. It has a Warncliffe blade with a hollow ground satin finish, beautiful satin, S90V. Plunge grind obviously is done well because it has a massive finger choil. Good access to the lock bar, super smooth on the drop, and that hole deployment, it's so large, and there's so much room for it that, man, you can get a phenomenal reverse flick or thumb flick you know so either one is equally as good this is the type of knife you can reverse flick with probably any finger um good ergonomics you know and you know yeah if you're back here you are far away from the edge but you can always choke up the finish on the blade or sorry the finish on the handle it's not, maybe they're considering an orange peel, I'm not sure, but it's kind of like an orange peel. It's like a subtle orange peel, which I do like. And if you don't know, orange peel finishes on titanium really, really 
are scratch resistant. So they're able to take a lot more uh, damage and just use without showing it. So I've done videos where I've shown scratching the surface of them and how you can barely even tell. Um, the clip is a titanium mill pocket clip that uh, that you know has a good amount of spring to it. It works very well. We have a steel lock bar insert. Uh, T6 hardware would be my biggest complaint. I wish it was not T6, I wish it was T8, but the knife came very, very sharp. I do like what Tuya is doing. You know, they're easy to contact, their warranties are good, they make great quality knives. So, you know, they just have a lot going for them as far as a company that you wanna work with and buy knives from. And this is a great example of what they can do. Whether it's your style is, you know, that's obviously, you know, gonna be your opinion, but it is built very, very well. One thing you gotta be careful with though, is you don't wanna hold low on the lock bar. This thing can come down and bite you. As long as you're holding up high, you're fine. But if you hold low, yeah, it can come down on you. So you just got to be careful for that. And I think most knife guys understand that. So not a big deal at all. Um, once it bites you once, you probably won't let it do, do it again. Anyways, uh, good geometry. It is robust on the spine, but yet slicey on the edge. So it's going to pass through really well. Utility cuts are going to be where it shines. And this pinch grip is amazing. So all in all, this is definitely one I like a lot. You know, I like a lot of tuyas. There's some that I don't. There's some, you know, I've said that are not my style or that I just don't like, but this is definitely one that I do like. Yes, it's aggressive. It looks aggressive, but it's very well done and, and it's unique. And that's another thing I like. I like that it, it sits in its own lane. There you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.